Amen. Praise the Lord tonight, church. Praise the Lord tonight, everyone. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord once again. Amen. And it's good to be here before God's people, the Church of Family Life Center, and all those that have joined us here tonight. Amen. This Wednesday night, amen, November 18, 2020, the year of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We give God all the honor and the glory for allowing us to be here once again in his presence on holy ground. Praise the name of the Lord. And the reason this is holy ground, because this place is a house of prayer, a house of worship. And that's what God declares his, his house to be. Praise the name of the Lord. So this is what we maintain this temple as, a house of prayer, a house of worship. And we thank the Lord because, amen, his presence is always with us. And if God be for us, who could be against us? Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. But before we get into the word of the Lord and the and praying, and amen, we're going to worship the Lord with that little song that says, Lift your praises to the Lord. Everybody with me there at home. Lift your praises to the Lord. Lift him higher in one accord. Lift your praises to the Lord. Why? For he alone is worthy to receive all praise and glory. Lift him higher in one accord. Lift your praise. One more time, everybody. Lift your praises to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your praises to the Lord. Lift him higher in one accord. Lift your praise. your praises to the Lord. Can you lift up your hands right there where you're at? Jesus, God Almighty, we give you the honor, the glory, the praise, the majesty, and the thanksgiving. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah for the peace, the freedom, the liberty. Hallelujah and the salvation that we so, amen, so abundantly enjoy, Almighty God, here this evening. God Almighty, where would we be if it were not for you? Hallelujah, Come going to the cross at Calvary and sacrificing your life. Hallelujah, so that we might be able to be changed and transformed and renewed and be able to live our lives over again. But because of this, hallelujah, we thank you, Lord, tonight, this evening. And we give you the honor and the glory. And we thank you, Lord, from the depths of our soul for all that you have given to us. We're truly grateful and thankful for all that you have given to us, Almighty God. Hallelujah for the, for the promise that we have that regardless of what's going on in this world, we know that everything's going to be all right because you got it all under control, Lord Jesus Christ. And if God be for us, who can be against us? Nobody. And we thank you for the victory we have in you as we worship your name once again. If your praise is to the Lord, Lift your praises to the Lord. Lift him higher in one accord. Lift your praises to the Lord. For 
before the presence of the Lord and not only in, in, in praises but in prayer. Amen. Let's ask God to bless this Bible study here this evening that we might be not just hearers but doers of what we of what he is about to give us here this evening. Let's pray. Jesus, God Almighty, we come before you to give you all the honor and the glory and thank you Lord for the salvation of our souls, for the baptism in Jesus Christ's name, for the name that is above every other name for the blood, for the word of God, for the Holy Ghost, for the faith that we have, to, that we are in today, Almighty God, that regardless, hallelujah, what goes on today, we know that everything's gonna be all right. Edify us with your word once again through the message that we are about to receive, that you are about to give us. Almighty God, help us to be hearers and doers of your word. Help us to apply what we are about to hear. Almighty God, that when you return, you will find us faithful and you will find us fruitful. We ask you this, tonight in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. All right. Amen. We're going to have our first scripture here tonight. Amen. As we begin, our first scripture is found in the book of Romans chapter 12 and verse 5. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Romans 12 and 5 reads as follows. So we, that's all of us, being many, are only one body in Christ. And everyone members one of another. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So we, even though there are many of us, because it's not, we're just not one person or two or three, but we, being many, we are one body in Christ. We are one church. We're not, we're not two. We're not three. We're not four. We're one body. We're one body in Christ. And every one of us are members one of another. Every one members one of another. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So we're going to be talking to you today on the topic, amen, do something for God now. Do something for God now. I'm going to be saying that throughout the entire message. Do something for God now. Amen. We cannot be stale. We cannot be dormant. We cannot be stagnant in the days in which we are living because of what's going on around us or whatever, because of fear or, or, or worry or, or overwrought with, with uh, concern and all that business. No, we need to, hallelujah, get busy for God and do something for God right now. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So, amen. We need to do something for the Lord, but we need to do it now. Because tomorrow's not promised to us. And we don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. We live in uncertain times. And so, remember, the only thing you're going to have to show for God of what you've done, hallelujah, amen, of what you've done, is what you've done throughout your lifetime for the Lord, for the kingdom of God. Amen. For sinners and for saints alike. Praise the name of the Lord. And for the honor and glory of the Lord. Can somebody say amen? So even though we are many people, we are many different, unique individuals, Nonetheless, we're only one body in Jesus Christ. And every one members one of another. So we're all connected. We're all, amen. Uh, we all help each other like a team. Can you say amen? We all help each other like a team. So we work together like a team. Praise the name of the Lord. Whether it be a, as husband and wives, you need to work together as a team. My wife and I, that's what we do. We work together like a team amen and so do the members of the body of christ or the members of the church praise the name of the lord hallelujah we work together amen as one body so what you are is god's gift to you and me what we are is god's gift 
to us. Can somebody say amen? But what you do with yourself is your gift and our gift back to God. Amen. So what you do with yourself is your gift back to God. So you don't want to just receive and not give. You know, the, the, you're, you know why the Dead Sea is called the Dead Sea? Because, amen, uh, water is, runs into it, but nothing runs back out. Amen. And that's like the life of a person, amen, that only receives but does not give back out. You're like the Dead Sea, and you don't want to be like that because that body of water is very, very full of minerals and salt and all kinds of other stuff that, amen, I think you can float without even, even trying to float, amen, because it's uh, so whatever, so full of the, the, the minerals and, and uh, acidity and, amen, the salt and whatever else it has in it. Amen. That causes, amen. It's, it's not normal, a normal body of water. Can somebody say amen? And that's because it doesn't give out. All it does is take, amen, but it does not give. So you don't want to be like the Dead Sea and just take and not contribute or give back into the kingdom of God. Can somebody say amen? So thus we come to the topic of our, of our Bible study tonight. Do something for God, but do it now. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till, uh, let's see what happens in 2021. Today is a day of salvation. I need to get busy for God now. Can somebody say amen? You see, because God deserves our best. Amen? He deserves my best. He doesn't deserve my leftovers. He doesn't deserve my scraps. God deserves my best. Amen. And now that you're young, for those that are young, give God your youth Give God your strength. Give God your best now. Don't wait. Oh, I'll wait till I'm a, you know, I'm an older person like my parents. So then I'll give him my best. But right now I'm doing my thing. Amen. Don't get caught doing your thing. Praise the name of the Lord and get caught outside of the perfect will of God. Amen. Because God, hallelujah, amen, will be your, amen, your judge. So God deserves our best. He has shaped us. He made us for a reason and for a purpose. He made us for a reason and for a purpose. And he expects us to make the most of what we have been given. Can you say amen? God expects us, amen, to make the most out of what he has given to us. In other words, to use what we have. Our talents, our gifts, and our abilities. Can somebody say amen? And someone once said, you know what, brother and sister? It's not your ability, but it is your availability. Amen. Are you available for God or are you out, out to lunch permanently? Amen. Are you, have you gone fishing permanently and you're not available to do anything for God? May God have mercy on you. Praise the name of the Lord. We need to make the most out of what we have been given. So he doesn't want you to worry about or covet abilities that you do not have. In other words, God don't want you to try to do something that you know you're not, you weren't meant to do. Amen. Let's say that you can't sing. And yet you're trying to force yourself to be a singer. Amen. Well, you know, it just... Amen. I'll, te I'll show you right now in my lesson how to be able to, amen, figure out whether you have that gift or not. So instead, God wants us to, amen, focus on the talents that we have been given and use them. Can somebody say amen? Focus on the talents, the gifts, and the abilities that God has given to us and use them. Multiply them. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So this is what we need to do. Amen. When you attempt to serve God in ways that you're not meant to serve him, amen, it, it doesn't feel right. You can tell that something is not right because it's just not, it's not working. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. It, it's frustrating and it produces limited results. It doesn't produce very well. So it also wastes your time, your talent, and your energy. So you don't want to be doing something that you weren't meant to do. Praise the name of the Lord. The best use of your life, the best way we can, 
allow ourselves to be used for the honor and glory of the Lord is to serve God in what we were meant to serve him in or as. What you were best made for. What God built us best to do. Amen. Whether it's to lead, whether it's to guide, whether it's to direct, whether it's to sing, whether it's to play, whether it's to teach, whether it's to preach, whether it's to uh, lead a, a, a prayer, a prayer uh, meeting, whatever the case might be. Amen. Whatever you've been made or shaping or whatever your talents are, use them to do that to your best of your ability. Can somebody say amen? But to do this, you must discover, amen, what your talent, your talents are. Amen. Learn to accept and enjoy whatever it is that God has made you to do and then develop it to its fullest potential. Can somebody say amen? You have to discover what you're good at, in other words. You got to discover, am I good to draw? Am I good to, amen, uh, uh, create? Am I good in, in, in the media ministry? Am I creative, amen, with words, with characters, with fonts, with uh, 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 sound? Am I good with uh, technology? Am I good? Whatever it is, let me tell you something, because in the kingdom of God, amen, in the old days, man, we didn't use no technology. I think the only thing we had was maybe the PA system, and that was it. We didn't have no media ministry. We didn't have no use for computers. Amen. All there was was a sound system, and that was it. Praise the name of the Lord. Now you have, amen, uh, uh, you have uh, the, the ability to use all this technology. And so ministry is expanding, and it's, it's getting larger. Can somebody say amen? And because it is, amen, some people think that a church like Family Life Center, oh, we got it all together. We got everything. We got extra. We have excess uh, uh, musicians. We have we have uh, uh, more of everybody. Brother, we barely make it sometimes. Amen. Hallelujah. But to be thinking like that, we barely, we, we don't even have a bass player right now. Praise the name of the Lord. And, and uh, we thank God for what we do have. And I, I thank God. Praise the name of the Lord because, amen, sometimes you can't even tell we don't got a bass player because it sounds pretty good to me. Praise the name of the Lord. But I thank God that God has blessed us. And we do whatever we have to do because everybody knows that they got to do something for God and they got to do it now. So I thank God for those people that do sacrifice, that realize this, and that allow themselves to be used in music and singing and, and media and sound, amen, and serving and, 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 and organizing and administrating and, and helping and, and, and praying and, and doing whatever they can do in order, hallelujah, so that we can do, put our best foot forward for God. So we need to do something for God, but we need to do it now. I can't wait until, well, let me, let me wait till I develop and I become perfect. You're never going to become perfect. Amen. There's no such animal. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You must discover what you were best made to do. Learn to accept whatever that is and enjoy it to its fullest potential and then develop it to its fullest potential. Can somebody, to your fullest potential. Praise the name of the Lord. So, discover what you are best made for. Discover what that is. So, if you need to find something out, find out what you're best made for or made to do or what your, your talent is to contribute into the kingdom of God. Can somebody say amen? Ephesians 5.17 tells us this. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Amen. So he tells us, I don't want you to be unwise. I want you to understand what the will of the Lord is for your life. Don't let another day go by. Start finding out and clarifying what God intends for you to be and to do. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Begin by, amen, figuring out, amen, your, your gifts and your abilities. Amen. You got to begin somewhere. So you got to start to find out by clarifying, what do you want me to do for you, God? And so you have to begin by 
uh, 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 figuring out what your, your gifts and your abilities are. You got to figure that out. You got to assess that. Praise the name of the Lord. So you need to take a long, honest look at what you are good at and what you're not good at. Hello, somebody. Amen. So you, <laughs> you got to be honest with yourself and, and see what you're good at, but also admit what you're not good at. And somebody say amen. I remember there was a certain brother that used to, amen, that used to lead service and lead different things. And uh, he was a good, amen, a leader in, 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 in music. But when it came to singing, he was not good. But he would force it. He would push it. And he kept on trying. And, you know, uh, it, it's, it's, not, it's not good when somebody forces something that they're not good at. They're not really, that's not really their they're, they're the best talent that they have. Amen. So you can't force it. You can't push it because then you got people, amen, that, that, that know when it's just, you just make yourself look bad. Praise the name of the Lord. So you need to be honest with yourself and assess your gifts and your abilities. Can you say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. You got to take a long, honest look at what you're good at, but also what you're not good at. Amen. Romans 12.3 tells us, For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Praise, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. So every one of us is different. We have that measure of faith that God has dealt to each and every one of us, has given to each and every one of us, and we need to use that measure of faith to its fullest potential in our life because faith without works is dead. Amen? So we got to do something. You can't just, oh, yeah, I have faith. I have faith in Jesus. I know he's coming back. I know he's coming back soon, and I love him and all that. Amen? That's nice. Praise the name of the Lord, but it's a lot more than just that. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. I need to do something. I need to contribute into the kingdom of God. Amen. And today is the day of salvation. So, amen. So whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. Because there's no device nor, nor anything else in the grave where we're all going to eventually go one day. Can somebody say amen? So put it this way. Do something for God now before you die. Simple. That's what the scripture means. Do something to the best of your ability right now that you're alive and don't wait because once you're dead, it's too late. Can somebody say amen? All right. According, because God has dealt and given to each and every one of us that measure of faith that we have in order to do and fulfill and use our gifts, our talents, and our abilities in the kingdom of God. Can somebody say amen? All right. Make a list. Amen. Ask other people, your friends, that are honest with you. I'm not talking about people that are going to snicker and laugh at you. I'm talking about, amen, people that are honest with you, your friends, for their sincere opinion. Tell them you're searching for the truth, not looking for a compliment. I'm not looking for you to just, amen, tell me what I want to hear. I'm looking for you to tell me the truth. Amen. Do I sing good? Do I, uh, uh, can I teach good? Can I uh, lead well? Can I uh, play what good? Can I, uh, am I do, doing good with technology that we have and using it for media, using it for sound? Amen. Am I good with uh, 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 anything else that I'm put to do or cooking or whatever it is that I can do? Amen. So you're not looking for a compliment. You're looking for the truth. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. You see, spiritual gifts and natural abilities are always confirmed by others. Let me say that again. Spiritual gifts and natural abilities are always confirmed by someone else. In other words, they're, they're verified. They're, con they're confirmed. We receive our confirmation. Yeah, oh, that was a good, that was a good preaching. Or that was a, that was a beautiful song. Or that was a, a, a beautiful way to, to play. Or that was, a, oh, that, that, I really like the, 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 the way you worded it in, the, in, the, in, the, in the, the, the preaching and the teaching on the, amen, on the, the artwork or the fonts that were in there the, and the, amen, the effects that you put into it and all that kind of stuff. So it is always confirmed by somebody else. 
So if you think you are gifted to be a teacher or a singer and no one else agrees, guess what? You're not good to be a singer or a teacher if they don't agree with you. Can somebody say amen? Amen. In other words, if you... if I know some people that just keep pushing it, keep pushing it, keep pushing it just until somebody might tell them, oh, yeah, yeah, you're all right. Yeah, you're good. Amen. And so they take that one time that somebody told, told them something because they were, amen, they gave them a compliment instead of telling them the truth. And they, they run with that and they keep forcing the issue that, of trying to be a good singer or trying to be a singer and a teacher when those, those are not their gifts or their abilities or their talents that they were given to amen contribute into the kingdom of God so you got to be careful the best way to discover your gifts and abilities is to experiment with other areas of service in other words try, try to find out you gotta you're never gonna know unless you try you gotta take a risk just start serving that's what I did amen I tell lifeline I tell the church all the time amen I didn't I didn't I wasn't trying to be. There were so many people here that had so many gifts. My God, when I came to the Lord, I felt like the, I felt like the smallest, amen, individual in the church. Praise the name of the Lord. So I, didn't, I wasn't trying to, to do anything. All I wanted to do was just contribute and serve. So what I started to do is serve. And that's how I learned. Amen. I didn't know how to sing. Amen. I never sang. Yeah, I'd sing the songs of the world and all that business, but I was just on my own in the shower and stuff like that. But other than that, amen, learning how to sing for God or sing a song unto the Lord, I learned by just sitting there and praising and worshiping the Lord along with the rest of the congregation. Amen. Nobody took me up here and told me, think, think, think. Okay, Art, here, sing this key, do this, that, and the other. Amen. I, all I did was I sat out there and I praised and worshiped the Lord along with everybody else. And I learned the words to the songs. Amen. And then I could just had an ear to be able to, amen, know if he had the right key or what have you. Amen. Let's go. Praise the name of the Lord. And that's all there is to it. Amen. You, you, it, all there is to it is just to do it. Amen. And see if it comes out right. If it comes out right, you can tell. If it doesn't come out right, you can tell that too. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So whatever your abilities, your gifts, and your talents are, amen. Discover what they are and use them. Do something for God, but do it now. Amen. Because tomorrow's not promised to anybody, brother and sister. Amen. Yeah, well, I was going to do it in 20, 20 and 22, but I, I, I never made it. Well, yeah, of course, because we don't know. And we don't know what's going to happen, brother and sister. Amen. Then we got to do it now. Hello, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. So the best way to discover your gifts and abilities is experiment with different areas of service. Just start serving experimenting with different ministries. I mean, you know, I remember when I came to the Lord, I'm telling you, I was in Lifeline, but at the same time, amen, they needed teachers for children's church. And so I started to begin, amen, by being a children's church teacher. And I stayed there for years. I stayed there for like five years, I think. Amen. Teaching the children. Amen. And I remember I was, we would, it's a big sacrifice because you'd be over there with the children Amen. And you would hear people in here, the whole church roaring at the, at the preaching of the, of the word of God from the men of God, the different men of God that God would bring here to come and preach to us. Brother Joe Mendoza and all the, all the rest of the preachers that would come in here. And you'd hear the church roaring and having a good time. And we'd be over there t teaching the children behind the scenes. But that's okay because God will honor your sacrifice. Can somebody say amen? God honors your labor is never in vain. You're storing up your treasures in heaven where moth and rust does not corrupt, nor thieves can break in and steal. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So whatever you do for God, amen, it's never wasted. It's never, hallelujah, it's never wasted whatsoever. So don't ever think like that. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So, amen. We need to try things. You're never going to know until you, just, until you take a risk and try. I didn't know that I was good at teaching children. But let me tell you, this is what I discovered in teaching children. Amen. In being a blessing to them, I was actually being a blessing to myself. Because in teaching them, I couldn't teach them about the you know, Noah's Ark and about Abraham and, amen, and, and Isaac and, and all that. I, I couldn't teach them until I first 
applied the word of God to my life. So in blessing them, I was actually blessing myself. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Because you got to, amen. The, you want to be great in the kingdom of God? Learn how to serve. Be a servant. Amen. Serve the Lord. Serve God's people. Do good unto all men, but especially to them that are the household of faith. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Until you're actually involved in serving, you'll never know what you're good at until you try. Can somebody say amen? So remember what I'm telling you. Don't try to figure out your gifts before volunteering to serve somewhere. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm telling you. Amen. I didn't know whether I was good at teaching until I tried. Tried teaching. And I didn't, I didn't start at the top. I remember one day, years ago, I remember this young man. Amen. He came up off the streets. Amen. He, he attended one of our Sunday school lessons way back in, amen, probably about 15, 15 years ago or more. Amen. And this young man walked in and, and then after the Sunday school lesson, he said, hey, can I talk to you? I said, sure. Took him to my office. And the young man told me, hey, I want to know what do I got to do to get behind that pulpit to teach like that. And uh, man, I, didn't, I didn't know what to tell him. I just told him, uh, uh, well, first of all, you got to be faithful to God. You have to come and just come and, and just keep coming. You got to be faithful to the services. And then we'll see. Well, amen. He started coming. He started being faithful, and he came to many, many services for many, many years. And eventually, he became a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but it took him years. It wasn't something that just happened overnight. It wasn't something that he just said, oh, you know what, I want to be behind that pulpit. Okay, you'll get there, but it's going to take you being faithful to God. It's going to take you being a servant of the Lord in the house of God. And then we'll see what the Lord has for you. Can somebody say amen? So I remember for years, amen, I, I, amen, I, didn't, I didn't even want to preach. Praise the name of the Lord. I just sat there and, and received and, and, and served and, and taught children. And, and it was a blessing. Praise the name of the Lord. And I was, I was a happy camper. Praise the name of the Lord. Until the Lord said, okay, now it's your turn to go up there and preach. Híjole, wait a minute. Wait a minute, let, let all these other, amen, seasoned ministers and men of God, let them continue. No, it was my turn to step up. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So, amen, you just got to start serving. You discover your gifts by getting involved in ministry. Can somebody say amen? Try teaching. We're coming up to the end of the year here of uh, 2020. And, you know, the, 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 the unfortunate thing is, is that here this year, 2020, amen, uh, since March, when this all pandemic, amen, blew up and everybody, you know, can run for the hills and all that business and masks and social distancing and amen and, uh, you know, and separation and stay indoors and don't go outside and, and stay home, don't even work and just let everything fall, fall to the ground. That's, that's very unfortunate that that took place because it also stalemated everybody in the church. Amen. Many, many ministries were not able to go forward. Thank God for our praise and our, our praise teams and our musicians and our, our sound, sound team and our uh, media ministry because they continue to go forward and the ministers and the ministry and the teaching and the preaching of the word of God. But other than that, amen, that the majority of all of our ministries were basically on hold. Amen. And so un unfortunately we weren't able, amen, and that's the plan of Satan. That's the plan of the devil, to keep God's people quiet, separated, divided, because, amen. But God tells us, you know what, amen, I want you to have a spirit of unity. I want you to be united. So we need to be united. We need to continue to come together as a church and have church as often as we can. So help me, God, and we do, we're, we're doing our best. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Let God do the rest. But the, the will of the devil is to destroy and separate and divide. Can somebody say, divide and conquer, as they say. But God's will is for us to remain united, amen, and connected, amen, and worshiping and praising him continuously. Can somebody say amen? So don't stay at home. Come to church, amen, when we have church, amen, whether you're in English and Spanish, amen, and, and participate. Don't be a spectator. Be a participator. Can somebody say amen? Don't be in the windows, amen, just looking in, amen. Don't be on the outside looking in. Be in here, be in the presence of God, 
and worship his powerful name, his wonderful name. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So, amen. Volunteer and just get busy somewhere. The applications are going to be going out in English and Spanish, amen, and apply for whatever God has placed in your heart. And if we're able to do whatever we can do, we're going to do it. We're going to do whatever we're allowed to do according to the authorities and according to, amen, uh, uh, our, those that are over us, amen, in our organization. And, of course, according to God's perfect will. Can somebody say amen? So you, you discover your gifts by getting involved in ministry. Try teaching, leading, organizing, playing an instrument, or working with young people, children, teenagers, Hallelujah. With young adults and, and youth or whomever. You will never know what you're good at until you try. Once again, can somebody say amen? So remember what the title of this message is. Do something for God when? Do something for God when? Now. Do something for God now. Because we're not promised tomorrow, brother and sister. We don't know when the Lord's coming back. And I don't want to get caught. And I don't want any of you to get caught with your hands empty. Praise the name of the Lord. I, what did you do for me in your lifetime, Art? Well, I served you, Lord, with everything I had. And I preached. And I told the truth to the church, Almighty God. Hallelujah. And, and, and that's what you, because that's you're, all you're going to have to show is what you did in your lifetime. For the honor and glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. So make sure that you contribute into the kingdom of God. That when that day we all stand before his majesty. We have a lot to be able to show him what we did for him. Can somebody say amen? You'll never know what you're good at until you try. If it doesn't work out, call it an experiment. Not a failure. Nobody's a failure. The only one that's a failure is the one that stops trying. Don't ever stop trying. Hallelujah. You'll eventually learn what you're good at, brother and sister. You just got to try to find out what it is. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Consider your heart and your personality. Paul, the great apostle, said this in Galatians 6 and 4. But let every man prove his own work. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone. And not in somebody else or not in another. Amen. But let every man test your own work. Test yourself in what you do. And then you're going to have rejoicing in yourself alone. And not in somebody else. Praise the name. You do your best for the honor and the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Do your best for God. And then you're going to have rejoicing in yourself and not in somebody else. Praise the name of the Lord. It helps to get feedback. Amen. From those who know you best. Who know you best. Your friends or those that are honest with you. Amen. Ask yourself questions. What do I really enjoy? Amen. Doing the most. Am I re do I really feel fulfilled? Amen. When I'm teaching. Do I feel really fulfilled by, amen, uh, contributing the ladies group or the ladies department, amen, when they ask me to do something or to get donations for, amen, for a different, uh, amen, uh, amen, food or drink or whatever, amen, from different businesses, amen, to get donations or, or when do I, fully, I feel the most fully alive? When, when is that? When do you feel the most fully alive? When you're doing something. I tell people all the time. Amen. When you find a job that you enjoy to go to work every day. Man, you make sure you hold on to that job. Can somebody say amen? Because there's nothing worse than going to work and you hate to go to work. Or you hate to be at that kind of job. Amen. So find the job or the type of employment that you like. Amen. And go for it. Because that's the one that's going to make time's going to fly. As they say, you know what? Time, time's... Amen. Uh, uh, time flies when you're having fun. And when you're enjoying what you're doing, time flies because it's enjoyable whatever it is that you're doing. Can somebody say, say amen? So what do I ask yourself? What do I really enjoy doing the most? When do I feel the most fully alive? What am I doing when I lose track of time? Because there'll be times I'll be in the office and I look up. Oh, my God, it's time to go. Tan pronto. feel like I just got here. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Do I like routine or do I like variety? What are you? Are you the type of person that likes impulsive things? Amen. Are you a, an impulsive person? Are you, or are you a person that likes routine or doing the same thing? Amen. Uh, 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 day in and day out, week in and week out, month in and month out, year in and year out. I don't know. But whatever you are, you like routine or do you like variety? Are you an impulsive person? Hallelujah. Are you a spontaneous person and just spontaneous? I get it. The Lord puts something in my heart and I spontaneously, amen, uh, react to that and go and do. Amen. I'm a doer. Praise the name of the Lord like the great apostle Paul was a doer. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. His, his temperament is that, was that he was a doer. Amen. He got things done. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Am I an introverted or am I extroverted? Hello, somebody. Amen. Do I like, do I prefer serving with a team or do I prefer, prefer amen, serving all by myself? So whatever it is you, you prefer to do, that's what you're good at. Praise the name of the Lord. You're, you're, you're a solitary person. You're an you're an introvert, which means you're just kind of like quiet and, and shy type of a person. Praise the name of the Lord. You like being by yourself. Praise the name of the Lord. So the, 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 the amen, the chances are is that you're a melancholy. Melancholy is a, is a thinker. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So, amen. Or am I, am I an extroverted person? I'm a very sociable person. That's a sanguine. The sanguine is a talker. And praise the name of the Lord. Like I said, amen. Uh, the choleric, which Paul the great apostle was, he was a doer. Can somebody say amen? So are, there are four different temperaments that we all, amen, that we all make, that, are, that are, we're all made up of. Praise the name of the Lord. And you have a major one, like melancholy choleric, which is a thinker and a doer. Or you could be a, a sanguine, Amen. And, 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 and also uh, a choleric, which is a talker and a doer. So, amen. There's different types of combinations of, of temperaments, but everybody is made up of two temperaments, basically, majority. Amen. You have a, 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 a one temperament that you're stronger in, and then you have a secondary temperament that's also, amen, part of your temperament also. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So, Amen. You discover what you are. You're, are you introverted like being by yourself? Or are you extroverted like being like to be around a lot of people? <clears throat> Am I a thinker or a feeler? Which do I enjoy more, competing or cooperating? Am I better on a team or am I better by myself? Amen. Competing. Examine your experience and extract the lessons you have learned. Hello, somebody. Examine your experiences in life and extract the lessons that you have learned. Praise the name of the Lord. Review your life. Amen. And think about how it has amen, made you and how you have developed. Moses told the Israelites in, in Deuteronomy 11 and verse 2. He told them this. And know ye this day, for I speak not with your children which have not known and which have not seen the chastisement of the Lord your God, his greatness, his mighty hand, and his stretched out arm. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Forgotten experiences are worthless. Praise the name of the Lord. So as he says, know ye this day, for I'm not speaking with your kids, which have not known, don't know nothing, haven't seen anything, Amen. You haven't seen the greatness of the Lord, but you have. Praise the name of the Lord. So examine your experiences and extract the lessons that we have learned. God has allowed us to go through many things. God has allowed us to grow through many things. I was just talking to somebody the other day, amen, that was going through something. And I told him, you know what? Amen. The Lord is allowing you to grow through this thing. And the only way you're going to grow is this, if you is if you extract what God is trying to show you and put it amen and benefit from what it is that the Lord is showing you out of this that you're going through can somebody say amen because listen forgotten experiences 
I, I reach back all the time and I remember my pastor, I remember my lessons of and then when I was in Lifeline, I remember the, the, the preachings and the teachings from all these different men of God that came through my life and, and walked through my world, amen, through the years I've been in the Lord, 37 years now, over 37 years. And, and God has been great and greatly, he's greatly to be praised, brother and sister, because I remember a lot of things. I might have forgotten some things, but there's a lot of experiences that I reach back on and I use them, especially to help other people, help other people that are in the church that, that don't have a clue what's going to hit them. Amen. And I'm able to tell them, listen, this is what the Lord has shown me through the years. Amen. And it'll benefit your life if you listen to what I'm going to tell you. Amen. So forgotten experiences are worthless. That's a good reason to keep a spiritual journal or remind, write things down. Paul worried that the believers, amen, in Galatia or at the church of Galatia would waste the pain they had been through. Amen. And this is what he said. Amen. Galatians 3, 4. Have you suffered so many things in vain? If it's yet in vain, if it be yet in vain. Have you gone through so many things and you've forgotten all the things that you went through in order to... Man, those are learning experiences. The reason that the Lord allows us, amen, to go through those things, hallelujah. Have you suffered and gone through that pain and agony and anguish and all those trials and tribulations? Have you gone through them in vain? It shouldn't be. Amen. We should learn and extract, amen, valuable experiences from those things that we can now help somebody else. We can teach somebody else. We can use it for ourselves. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So you don't want to suffer so many things, go through so many things in vain. We rarely see God's good purpose in pain or failure or embarrassment even while it's happening. Nobody likes to go through pain or suffer failure or to endure embarrassment. Amen. Especially while it's happening. When Jesus washed Peter's feet, he said, in John 13 and 7, this is what he said. Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do, amen, thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. What I'm doing for you, amen, praise the name of the Lord, Peter. What I'm doing for you, amen. You're not going to realize what it is, that, or amen, what I'm doing for you and why I'm doing it right now. But you're going to know afterwards. It's going to be revealed to you. Many times, only in hindsight or looking back, amen, or after looking back at something after it happens, do we realize that God intended good out of our problems? Can somebody say amen? Listen, God is the only one that I know that can, ter that can turn something bad into something good. Just look at what he did out of your life and mine. Amen. He made something bad and he made it into something good. Something for his honor and glory. Something that the world was, had already thrown into the trash can. Something that the world had already dis discarded and said, you know what? Ese, ese muchacho es basura. Amen. He's no good. She's no good. Amen. Just, just forget about them. They're not, they're, not, they're not worth it. Praise the name of the Lord. But God saw something in our lives and God can make something great out of something bad he can take the vilest of a man and woman and make them into his for someone for his honor and his glory he can make them into a vessel of honor just look at what he's done in your life so remember God can is the only one that can take something bad and make something good out of it can somebody say amen Praise the name of the Lord. So many times after looking back at something, after it happens, do we realize that God intended good for out of our, in our, out of our lives. God intended it for something good to be, for something good to come out of it. Amen. Hallelujah. After we go through it. But many people don't realize that, that amen, that all things work together for good. For them that love God. For them that are called according to His purpose. Not your own thing. Not what I feel like doing. Not what I, oh man, I'm, I'm busy right now. I'm, I'm, I'm doing my own thing. Now you need to stop doing your own thing and start doing what God wants you to do. Because remember, the title of this message is do something for God, but do it now. 
Don't wait. Amen. Today's the day of salvation. I need to get busy for the Lord now because nobody has promised tomorrow. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. Extract, extract lessons from our experiences or your experiences in life because God can use those various divine, defining moments of your life to help somebody else. I'm telling you. Amen. The experiences that we have, we're able to share them with other younger people than us. Amen. Or members of the church and, and, and give them your experiences. Or oh, you know what? My pastor taught me this. And you know what? And so now I believe because it's true. And you, you're able to teach the things that you were taught. Or you're able to teach the things that you have experienced in life. And those things are valuable lessons because they're tried, tested, and true and proven. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Accept and enjoy what God has made you for. Accept and enjoy what God has made you for. And learn to enjoy yourself. Learn to enjoy life. This is what I tell the members of the church all the time. I have fun serving God. Oh, I might not look like it. I might not have a smile on my face all the time and all that business. That doesn't mean I'm not having fun. Praise the name of the Lord. I might be sitting in this chair like that little boy told his mommy because she made him sit down. He says, I might be sitting in this chair, mom, but inside I'm running around all over the backyard. <laughs> That's the way I am. I have fun serving God. Amen. And I, I encourage you to, to do the same thing because you need to accept and enjoy what God has made you for. Since God knows what's best for you and me, we should gratefully accept the way he has made us. The Bible says in Romans 9, 20 and 21. Nay, but O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why have you made me this way? Why, why hast thou made me thus? Amen. Verse 21. Hath not the, pow the potter power over the clay? Of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor another unto dishonor. Praise the Lord somebody. Amen. Listen to me. God is telling us. Amen. But you brother and sister. How can we tell God? Amen. Why have you made me this way? Don't tell God that. You need to understand Amen. God made you and he doesn't make mistakes. Amen. Because he, he reminds us, doesn't the potter have power over the clay to make it the way he wants to make it into that vessel, that vessel of, in order to hold water or whatever, to hold flowers or whatever. Amen. The vessel of honor and another to dishonor. Amen. We were made sovereignly by God. For God, amen, for, amen, for his purpose. So you shouldn't resent or reject what God has made in your life. Don't try to be somebody else, but be who God has made you to be. Can somebody say amen? Ephesians 4, 7 says this, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Jesus Christ. Part of understanding our place or limitations is knowing that just as a runner Amen. In a race is given a different lane to run in. We must, as Hebrews 12:1 tells us here this evening. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, hallelujah, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us can somebody say amen praise the name of the lord you need to just get rid of all that that piano that you have amen get out get rid of that junk in your trunk amen and just start running for jesus christ and run in the lane that you've been given to run in and run until you can't run no more and run and pace yourself until you make it to the end can somebody say amen praise the name of the lord and do something for God now. Hallelujah. Don't be envious of the runner in the lane next to you. Just focus on finishing your race. Amen. Satan will try to steal the joy of service from you in a couple of ways. 
by tempting you to compare your ministry with somebody else and by tempting you to conform your ministry with the expectations of somebody else. Both are deadly traps. Galatians 6, 4 tells us, but let every man prove his own work, like I mentioned earlier. And then you're going to have rejoicing in yourself alone and not in somebody else. Can somebody say amen? Listen, when you compare yourself, amen, you either find that someone does a better job than you and you will become discouraged or you'll find that someone doesn't do as good as you and you'll be full of pride. Either way, amen, it will take you out of service and rob you of your joy. So you don't want to get pride, proudful, and you don't want to get discouraged either. Amen. As we read in 2 Corinthians 10, 12, I tell people this all the time because there's so many people that look and say, well, look at, they're in they're that church. They let them do all kinds of things. And, they, and they, they, they mess around and they go out together with no chaperones and they're just, you don't know, you do not know, chiquito. You don't know what their reputation is like or their testimony. So don't even go there. But let me tell you what God's word says. Amen. Second Corinthians 10, 12. This is what it says. We dare not make ourselves of the number. In other words, don't be of that group of people or co that compare themselves and that commend themselves. They, 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 they they brag on themselves and they compare themselves amongst themselves. But, me, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves amongst themselves are not wise. This is not wise. This is not smart. This is not good to do. Amen. Don't be measuring yourself by other people. Don't be looking over there and say, well, you know what? She's all messed up. How come I can't be that way? Or he's, he's not doing good. Why, why should I have to be good? Amen. Don't worry about them. Amen. You take care of yourself and work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Don't be comparing yourselves to somebody else. And don't be commending yourself with somebody else. Amen. You want to measure yourself by something? Measure yourself according to the word of God. That's it. And then you're going to get a true reading of how you, should, you and I should really be. Can somebody say amen? All right. Paul, the great apostle, was so successful because he refused to allow himself to be distracted by criticism or by comparing his ministry with other people. He didn't have time to be comparing himself. He didn't have to be time, amen, to be allowing himself to be distracted. That's what's happening today in the days in which we're living, brother and sister. People are so distracted because they're paying attention to everything else that's going on around you. Don't do that. Praise the name of the Lord. Keep developing Amen. What God is making you into. Hallelujah. We are to be, amen, we are to cultivate our gifts and our abilities. Keep your hearts aflame. Grow our character and our personality. Broaden your experiences so we will be more effective in our service and ministry unto the Lord. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Philippians Amen. One nine says, and this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. Keep growing in your knowledge and in your understanding. If you don't utilize the abilities and skills that God has given to you, you'll lose them. In other words, if you don't use them, you'll lose them as they say. Jesus taught the parable of the talents to emphasize this truth. Referring to the servant who failed to use one, his one talent, the master said, in Matthew 25, 28. Take therefore the talent from him and give it, amen, to him which has ten talents. Fail to use what you have been given and you'll lose it. Use the ability you've got and God will increase it. Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy 4, 14 and 15, he says this. Neglect not the gift that is in you which was given to thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. In verse 15, meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy prophecy may appear to everybody. Whatever gifts you have been given, amen, can be enlarged and developed through practice. Don't settle for a half-developed gift. 
Stretch yourself and learn all that you can. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. Use what God has given you. Amen. 2 Timothy 2.15 says this. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Take advantage of every training opportunity to develop your shape and sharpen your serving skills. Like athletes preparing for the Olympics, we keep training for that big day. Others live to obtain that which is temporary, but we live to obtain that which is eternal. 1 Corinthians 9, 25, And every man striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. Hallelujah. But we do it to obtain an incorruptible crown. And somebody say amen. What you are is God's gift to you. And what you do with yourself, amen, is your gift to God. Let's do something with ourselves this year for his honor and for his glory. God bless you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, God Almighty, we give you the honor and the glory. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us, hallelujah, to be present to receive your word here today. God Almighty, have your way in our lives, our families, hallelujah, as individuals, our church, Almighty God, our church family. Help us, Almighty God, to do our best and let you do the rest. Help us, Almighty God, to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. And to, and to know that today is a day of salvation. i got to do something for you today. Because tomorrow is not promised to anybody. Hallelujah. We know that you're coming back soon. And your reward is with you. Almighty God. And we just seek to just please you. To love you. To serve you. And to tell other, other people about you Lord Jesus Christ. Help us Almighty God to discover what we're best at. And utilize our talents, our gifts and our abilities. And when you return you will find us faithful and fruitful. And you will, amen, welcome us into the to enter into the joy of the Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord tonight, church. Amen. Thank you for being with us here for the, the word of God here this evening. Amen. We need to, uh, amen, bring, amen, all our brothers and our sisters, amen, that need our prayers. We need to go over them and continue to pray for them. Can somebody say amen? We want to remind you, amen, to pay your tithe. Be faithful in paying your tithes and, and giving your offerings unto the Lord. That God will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not be able to contain it. Praise the name of the Lord. That's God's promises to the church. Also, I just forgot, thought about it just right now. Amen. Our loan or our, our, our new mortgage that we're going to be in with a new company, with ACCU, amen, will be finalized here at the end of the month of, of November. We got a better rate than what we thought. It was supposed to be 4.95, and it went down to a 4.0. Amen. So our payment is even going to be less than what we thought. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And, and, and God is good. I want to just give God all the honor and the glory. I think our first payment won't be in t until December or maybe January. But we'll be with a new bank. We'll be with ACCU instead of the company that we were with before. And we want to just thank God for our organization who helped us get this loan. Amen. And it's just better for us all the way around. So to God be all the honor and the glory. And I just wanted you to know that that's going to take place with the help of the Lord. Amen. With the will of the Lord. Amen. And God, with God's help, it's going to be happening. Amen. Here the, by the end of this month of November for sure. 
Amen. Pray requests. We have those that we need to pray for, as, as we always do. And I don't take this lightly. I do it because if, if I was on this list, I would hope and pray that you would pray for me. So I pray for, amen. We need to pray for Brother Joe Gonzalez for healing, Josie Nieto for healing, Lorenza Gamboa for healing, Beatriz Aguirre for healing, Dalvina Diaz for her health, Stephanie Navarro, spiritual strength, Brother and Sister Quiroz for strength, John Barcelo for strength, amen. Esther Naomi Robert Emmanuel Jaime for healing, Maria Luz Cardenas for strength, Belinda Hernandez for deliverance, Antonio Romero for strength, Allison Carolina Ariola, amen, for restoration, Anaya Mesa for healing, Gilbert Amaraz for liver transplant. Noah Marin for strength. Helen Dugatter for healing from her back problems. Mario Castillon Jr., we pray, Almighty God, that he, amen, is a, amen, that the Lord bring him back safely, Almighty God, from the, from the, amen, from the Marines. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And we also, amen, want to pray for, uh, amen, Gilbert Amaraz, who needs a liver transplant. Amen. Uh, and uh, Pauline Gutierrez for healing. Amen. Philip Martinez for healing. Ruben Quiroz returned safely from Uganda. Carmen Gamboa, amen, from uh, her surgery that she had. Baby Bella, who needs healing from heart problems. Elisha Jackson, who needs healing. Maria Cardona, she's sick and fell and she needs our prayers. Olga Padilla, Betty Caballero, Andrea Turner, Frank Corona, Pastor Victor Munoz and his family there from the, out in the Santa Ana area. Amen. He has a, a COVID virus. He and his, his wife and his family, we need to pray for them. Olivares family for healing. Their father passed away from the virus. Pastor Padino for his, and his family for his daughter. That he lost his daughter Donna. Amen. Bishop Abel Rodriguez to recover from the stroke that he suffered. Let's continue to pray for our, amen, our friend Bishop Abel Rodriguez. Carmen Nunez, Brother Danny Camonte's mom. Amen. She needs healing. Peter Effa for healing. Sylvia Lopez also for healing. Amen. Lipia Effa for healing. Marisol Sanchez for healing. Amen. It's got coronavirus. Veronica and Jose Crisostomo, amen, also for healing. Praise the name of the Lord. And anybody else that I have might, might have forgotten, nonetheless, right now, these names, let's take them before the Lord and pray on their behalf. Jesus, God Almighty, we give you the honor and the glory, and we thank you, Lord, for your word that we have received here this evening. And with that measure of faith that we have received from hearing the word of God, because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, we apply that measure of faith, Lord, to all the needs that there are and all the brothers and sisters that we have mentioned here tonight. Touch their bodies and make them whole, save, heal, deliver, restore, that we might be sure to and comfort and that we might be sure to give you all the honor and the glory for hearing our prayer and answering our cry here tonight, Almighty God. As we claim these prayers answered in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. God bless you, church. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us here this evening. Amen.